should you work 70 hours a week like narayan murthy says or 40 hours a week like satya nadella says the answer is 40 hours a week both are right what so to explain huh? here is what we will do let's create two teams okay team 70 hours hmm? and team 40 hours okay i'm team 40 hours obviously and team science hmm. will be the umpire Okay. okay. <laughs> and make sure to watch the episode until the end because the final results will tell you how you should work and how you should plan your career. Okay. Right? Interesting. So let's start with team 70 hours, right? Yep. Narayan Murthy, of course, in an interview said that India's work culture needs to change, right? Youngsters should be prepared to work 70 hours a week if the country has to compete effectively on the global stage. Yeah. Okay. He did say that. Elon Musk agrees. Elon Musk says that you cannot change the world without working 80 to 100 hours, right? So he's in like team 100 hours. <laughs> he's changed a lot of things, including the world. Yeah. So I kind of see the point he's making there. I don't agree with him. I see yeah. the point. Yeah. Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba, Taobao, T-Mall, and basically the creator of e-commerce in China, yeah. favors what is called 996, that you are supposed to work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. Yeah, <laughs> and we have seen the results of it. Again, I don't agree with Jack Ma, but uh, the results are there for everyone to yeah. see. So he says, I personally think that 996 is a huge blessing. How do you achieve success you want without paying extra effort and time? Hmm. Okay. Steve Jobs says, I'm convinced that about half of what separates the successful entrepreneurs from non-successful ones is pure perseverance. He is also in favor of working hard and long hours. Yeah, he was. Ratan Tata, Mukesh Ambani, Sundar Pichai, Amitabh Bachchan have all extolled the virtues of working long hours, especially in the beginning of your career. Yeah, Team 70 hours has a lot of heavy eaters, man. I mean, this is not fair. Who does Team 40 hours have? Please tell me we have some good people on our side. Our side is your side, okay? Well, I have not yet <laughs> declared my side. <laughs> okay. But Satya Nadella, huh. who says that empathy, mindfulness, balancing work with personal well-being is important. Harsh Mariwala, huh. founder of Mariko. Huh. So you, you must have definitely heard of parachute oil, yeah. safola oil, yeah. right? He says hard work is not synonymous with number of hours worked. Right? I agree with him. Vinod Khosla, one of the top investors ever, right? He has said that working less is fine as long as you are willing to live with the consequences, right? You may not get the biggest house or car to show to your neighbors, but you can make that choice. Yeah, I mean, right? okay, I mean, this kind of seems slightly backhanded, but I'll take it, I'll yeah. take it. Yeah. Also, you know, if you think that women might be mostly in one team, I'll give two examples. Marissa Mayer, huh. former VP at Google and CEO of Yahoo, hmm. was clearly in team 70. But Sheryl Sandberg, mm. COO of Facebook, was clearly in team enjoy life and have a balanced approach to work. Right? I like Sheryl. I don't like where she works, but I like Sheryl yeah. for her thoughts. So team 40 seems to have some decent hitters. They are not as heavy as yeah. team 70 clearly, but they're, they're decent. They're, they're good yeah. heavy names. Right. But we are not through yet. No? Okay. At this point, hmm. we need to clarify something. Huh. Right. The people in team 40. Huh. What are they doing with the rest of their time, right? There are two possibilities here. Hmm. One is that they are spending time with family and hiking and hobbies and TV and all of that, right? Hmm. 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 Or they work 40 hours for their employer and then they work 30 hours for themselves to improve their marketable skills, to improve their long-term uh, career prospects and so on, right? Yeah, so I mean, yeah. Now... I can think there are three different teams, right? Okay. Team 70 hours are the people saying 70 hours you have to work for your employer. Okay. Team 40 hours, which says work 40 hours on your career, rest of the time, chill, relax, do other things. Okay. And third, I'll call team 40 plus 30, which is 40 <laughs> hours for the employer and 30 more hours on career related things, but which you do for yourself. Okay. I I am still team 40 only because hmm. I kind of like to have a life outside of work, you know, hmm. family, hobbies, uh, yeah. some bit of TV, not all of it. But hmm. I like to spend time not stressed about work, let's just say. 
let's see what team science has to say okay. right you are making it sound like team 40 is winning but team science might have surprises okay, okay. team science has three referees okay there is economics hmm. there is biology medical science hmm. and there is psychology and personal development okay hmm. so team economics okay has done a lot of studies hmm. of people how much they work and what kind of output they get basically it is called productivity right yes. the science of studying productivity and those results are pretty clear up to 40 hours uh -huh. you are the most productive yes. okay right like 35 to 40 hours is the peak right from 40 to 50 hours you are still producing your total output keeps going up mm. but the output per hour mm. keeps slowly going down right okay. so you are it's reducing productivity Slowing diminishing down. returns yeah 55 onwards is pretty much negative oh. okay at 70 hours your total output is not more than 55 hours oh okay. so by from 55 hours to 70 hours you're basically undoing all of the work you've done uh, right. kind of right yeah a slightly different research hmm. Uh, looked at what happens when you switch from a five day work week hmm. to a four day work week. Okay. And it showed that performance improved oh. or sustained on 22 out of 24 measures of output. Turnover, hmm. which is people quitting, hmm. right? Attrition dropped 39%. Wow. And motivation and mental health of the employees improved. Those are solid numbers and it seems like these numbers are all in favor of team 40 only so far. Oh yeah, biology, medical science is also on your side. <laughs> yeah, okay. I know. I'm trying to take the wins wherever I can because I kind of sort of know how his brain works <laughs> yeah. and what's coming yeah. next. Okay, so biology and medical science. Yes, right? please. That likes to talk about sleep, mm. stress mm. and burnout. Correct. Okay. So if you are not getting enough sleep, hmm. right, there will be all kinds of problems, health okay. issues as well as ability to work, right? Yes. With low sleep, 33% increased chance of stroke, 13% hmm. increased risk of heart disease if you are working 55 plus hours, hmm. okay? It reduces cognitive function. So you are sitting there for so many hours, but your brain is not quite completely there. Creativity goes down, problem solving goes down. Yeah, I, I read a research uh, that when you're actually awake without sleep, it is as good as being drunk. So that is why uh, people are advised not to drive if they hadn't, haven't had enough sleep. So yeah, it, it checks in, it clocks yeah. in with this. So question is, how do you know whether you are getting enough sleep or not? Like people like to throw a number saying re sleep eight hours every day. Yeah. But I know people who sleep only four hours and they're extremely productive and there is no problem, right? Yeah. So it is a very person dependent thing. Okay. okay. If you wake up feeling refreshed, hmm. right? If you are able to stay alert and focused throughout the day hmm. without dozing off in meetings, hmm. right? If your mood is stable, hmm. you're not extra irritable or extra anxious or extra emotional. Hmm. And any physical activity like a workout doesn't leave you excessively sore or tired. Ah. Physical recovery should be solid, right? So if all four of these things are happening, hmm. then you are getting enough sleep. If oh. one of these is not happening, then you should look at whether you should be sleeping more. That's yeah? an interesting point about physical workout uh, not leaving you excessively tired because I hadn't actually uh, thought of uh, that with in conjunction with sleep but it does make sense if you have had restful sleep then physical uh, exercise will not tire you out and will leave you sore yeah so a very and good point to remember this is one of those things right where our brain is just very weird hmm. when you do that exercise and when you are tired you don't think of connecting it to sleep which yeah. was like you know 12 hours ago but <laughs> exactly. there is a connection there's right? a very clear connection right so sleep also seems to be in my favor yeah Next level up from there hmm. is stress. Stress hmm. can literally kill you and mess up a whole bunch of physical systems in your body. Yes. Uh, there's an entire episode we have on that. Check it out. I am not going to go into those details. Just to sum it up, stress affects your cardiovascular systems, your lungs, your kidneys, your skin, your immune system, your gut, your brain, your heart, your uh, everything. And diabetes. And yeah. diabetes. No. So let's focus more on what causes stress and in your workplace, hmm. what can cause stress. Okay. Right. Yep. 
because if long hours are causing you stress then that's bad you should not be working those many hours right Correct. work only as much as you can work without stress Correct. so the question is why do some people get stressed at just 30 hours and why do some people not get stressed even at 80 right yeah so there is a book called drive by mm-hmm. daniel pink which points to three things autonomy mastery and purpose okay these are the three things if you have them you will be very motivated at work and you will not feel stressed and when any one or more of them are missing stress is going to cause problems okay makes sense autonomy hmm. means you have the freedom to choose how you are going to complete the tasks that you have been given okay right? if there is micromanagement or there is no freedom about how or when or where work gets done hmm. or there is no visibility or predictability on when a task gets assigned to you and what kind of task gets assigned right i mean oh sunday night suddenly your boss sends an excel spreadsheet saying do this analysis by 9 am tomorrow right all of those are going against autonomy and those will cause stress now okay. this is even flashbacks to my previous life man well just now this is in the news this kind of stress caused problems to an employee at a well known company yeah, right we, yeah let's move on to the next one mastery hmm. right not having mastery means that you are not going to the next level in your skills right okay either you are doing the same things over and over again and it is getting boring hmm. right you are hmm. not learning anything new hmm. you are bored stagnant frustrated disengaged or you get tasks which are so challenging that you can't do them you don't have the tools to do them you don't know how to do them right you're frustrated huh. so lack mastery is that your tasks are just a little bit above your above current, your current level. level so that you do them with some difficulty and in the process you learn something and you go one level higher right yeah hmm this actually again gives me flashback to some of my older work mm. and i am realizing that there's a pattern to why i quit the jobs that i quit yeah. but go on you said yeah. there is a third thing also purpose hmm. you can see the connection between your work hmm. and the value it is creating hmm. and there is a connection between the value your work is creating and your value system what you think is important in the world right uh-huh. those two connections if either one of those connections is missing you see your work as pointless and that also leads to stress i just had a wonderful insight the jobs that i joined hmm. were uh, because i looked into the autonomy mastery and purpose that those jobs had yeah. and the jobs that i quit yeah. were jobs that didn't give me the autonomy that didn't lead me to mastery and that didn't uh, create the purpose that i wanted with those jobs in my life yeah and those were the same jobs because when you joined you had yeah. a certain idea and when you quit yeah. you realized the reality yes yeah i was trying to keep them separate <laughs> but thank you for making it very clear navin yeah. <laughs> those are the three important big ones yeah. and a few others which are sort of related right okay. unclear expectations lack of recognition toxic relationships and social isolation at work right <laughs> and mismatch in value so all of these result in you being frustrated at work and that causes stress okay yeah he's he's basically drawn a portrait of uh, all of my previous career all of my previous jobs not career this career is going well so far <laughs> and when the stress goes beyond a certain level hmm. you can sur- suffer from burnout burnout is a serious medical condition yeah. and i personally know people who had to quit their job take time off for 6 months or 1 year and then very slowly come back to working life because they suffered burnout right yep. so it's a very very serious thing do not get into that situation i have taken four year sabbaticals man i yes. uh, some of it may have been because of burnout i'm not saying all of it was burnout but yeah mm-hmm. burnout is a very serious medical condition and not just a word to be thrown out are to burnout ho gaya office Correct. mein absolutely it's not that but yeah. here is the thing all of which you've explained even in the medical and biology science aspect hmm. still is team 40 only yeah so i want to read a quote by simon sinek author of start with why okay he said working hard for something we don't care about is called stress hmm. working hard for something we love is called passion ooh okay. interesting so all the problems that we talked about so far hmm. there are two main things about them hmm. right one 
is that they were not really caused by long hours they were caused by the stress from bad conditions yeah uh, and second is that they are averages yeah okay and the thing about averages is that you might not be average okay yeah 16% of people are definitely not average okay so yeah. you might be in the top 16% who can do 70 80 90 hours of work yeah and do great right yeah even so, though i was stressed i was still passionate about those jobs the careers that i yeah. was in so yeah, yeah it, it checks yeah. tracks uh, and you could find ways of working long hours without the stress as long as you do the mastery autonomy and purpose uh, purpose right absolutely the simple question to ask is that are you choosing to work 70 hours or is your employer forcing you to work okay hmm if your employer is forcing you to work hmm. then you should ask the question what is in this for me right right are you getting paid double or more right hmm. are you learning skills that are extremely hard to get in any other company hmm. right are you getting like serious resume value out of this right hmm. three years at mckinsey hmm. is insanely stressful and very long hours agreed but it stays on your resume for the rest of your life 30 years later people will see and say oh this is a mckinsey guy right, right. so you know it can give a significant boost to your career compared to alternatives True. and maybe doing that for a short while like 3 years 4 years or so hmm. is totally acceptable right it is similar to studying for je right hmm. 3 years of hell but then you are an iitian yeah right yeah. so uh, in fact in my personal case i did study very hard hmm until the je exam and then as soon as i entered iit i made a decision that i will never work so hard again i will always balance studies and work with all kinds of other extracurricular activities and i was stuck to it right yeah. but as vinod khosla says i have given up things right i am not at the same levels where my classmates or colleagues are and they are not at the same level as you are when i'm happy with my choice right so i am very happy with his choice yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other question you have to ask hmm. is can your body your personality handle it right yeah. some people are more anxious hmm. and they cannot handle uh, the long hours even if everything else is right right and again so, anxious here refers to the anxiety disorder and not just a general feeling of anxiousness yes yeah. and there could be many other reasons why hmm. you can't do it and it yeah. is perfectly okay to choose to not be in that boat right correct another problem that you have to look at carefully hmm. is that do you end up working long hours hmm. because of indiscipline because you sit there wasting time and then you are forced to do all nighters to get your tasks done on time right there are a lot of people in that category i know that if they just worked hmm. with focus <laughs> they could get done in 25 hours a week but they are working 60 but to that i will add the point that if this uh, sounds like you then you might want to get tested for adult adhd it's a very real thing and uh, sometimes it is difficult to focus because adhd makes it difficult to focus it's neurological but again like he said uh, the bigger question here is you have to check for yourself whether it is happening to you nobody can tell you that yeah. and look online there are all kinds of techniques to improve your focus right for example there is a technique called pomodoro see if that works for you right important thing to remember hmm. right is that if you want to make something great of your career you are the ambitious type hmm. then the research says that a large number of hours right hmm. it's called the 10000 hour number don't focus too much on the 10000 number but the fact that a very large number of hours are needed yes. for you to become really good at something the second part of that is that it can't just be random hours you put in it has to Correct. be deliberate practice which is challenges which are just a little above your level and there is someone or some system telling you which things you are not good at which things you need to improve we have a episode on that please check it out right yes the last thing i want to point out hmm. is that hard work is important but not necessarily in terms of hours per week right it is really hours over a 10 year period ah. because bill gates law it is called we underestimate what 
can be achieved in 10 years and we overestimate what can be achieved in one or two years right yeah. so being focused on one thing and putting in 10000 hours on that thing over a long period can get you to a lot of places right yeah and we've kind of done an episode on that uh, the power of compounding uh, do go check that out but navin here's my question hmm. who finally wins in this three way mexican standoff team 40 only team 40 plus 30 or team 70 yeah the point of this episode is that you need to choose which team works for you all three are right okay so let's summarize okay right? first figure out your level of ambition right it is completely okay to not be ambitious as vinod khosla said yeah right you can say that i choose happiness mm. over achievements i choose relationships over career and things like that and you can choose to be chill like the dude in which case your team 40 yeah. and you spend rest of the time on your relationships your hobbies and whatever makes you happy generally having a chill life right if you're ambitious mm. then work as hard as possible mm. but not any harder okay right? makes sense sleep is essential yes okay having friends and family relationships is important as satya nadella points out yes right and the number of hours per week is not important the total number of hours you put in with deliberate practice with focus over a 10 year period as bill gates says that is more important hmm. okay long hours hmm. in short bursts is okay okay that doesn't cause any serious long term problems hmm. and it might be necessary especially when you are young you are doing a startup or something exciting or so on right but this is not sustainable it is not something you want to do in the long term and you want to spend 30 to 40 hours working for your employer you want to spend around 30 hours working on self improvement getting skills important for your long term career now some people might get lucky and that can happen at your employment in which case you are working 70 hours for your employer others that remaining 30 hours has to come from external sources hmm so the crux of the episode seems to be you will somehow need to work 70 ish hours a week but how you spend those 70 hours where you spend those 70 hours how you split up those 70 hours and what portion of those 70 hours you allocate to the family also kind of matters and makes a difference in the oh, and one, long term one thing i want to add hmm. is that there are people who can do great things with less hours right hmm. my phd advisor hmm. was one of the top people in the world in his field hmm. okay hmm. in the eight years i knew him i never saw him come to office before 9 am and i never saw him stay in office after 6 pm except for three times in eight years okay wow and yet he managed to be one of the top people so if you can focus then you can do it in less hours but if you are average like us then you probably need a few more hours okay probably yeah. <laughs> i don't spend those few hours but i do spend a few more hours than the typical 40 hours is what i'm realizing after all of his explanation so in my case i think i tend to work 40 plus 15 hours and spend a good chunk of it with my family because to me that's important but to you something else might be important and what that something else is is for you to decide and for you to know yeah and uh, i think most important is do not get stressed okay because stress is literally killing you check out our episode on that stress is literally killing you and we are trying not to get you killed shrikant naveen future iq